So this is a follow-up on my last video where I was showing this uh, synthesizer Super Nintendo in a 1U rack mount. First, we're gonna start with the power section. So power comes here, 120 volt, and goes to this 120 volt switch. That then goes to this converter of 120 volts AC to 12 volt DC. Coming out of this 12 volt DC, I have two power supplies for two different sections of the box. Here we have the 10 volt that goes to the Super Nintendo to feed its power. And here we have the 5 volt that is feeding uh, the capacitive touch buttons. So basically, uh, the first goal of this project was to have a Super Nintendo that is flat. Um, so I had to take every pins and put them in an angle to put the cassette at a horizontal level. Then I wanted to use the original buttons, uh, but making them switch uh, mechanically would be a little complicated. So I went to uh, with these capacitive touch uh, components that you can easily find on eBay. So basically when uh, you're touching the button, they're sending a 5 volt signal and this 5 volt signal is uh, switching the relays. One of them is acting like the power switch on the Super Nintendo and the other one is acting like you're uh, hitting the reset button. So for the first button here, we have the volume. I'm taking the sound output uh, basically at the back of this connector and it's going to these two jacks at the back. When two jacks are plugged, the sound comes stereo, and when only jack is, one jack is plugged, um, it merges the signal to become a mono output. This knob is for the speed control of the oscillator that uh, controls the sound output. What's nice with the Super Nintendo is that there is two crystals. One is for the, the main machine, and the other one is for the sound, so you can actually lower uh, the speed of the, the sound output without uh, like altering everything or else it wouldn't even be able to understand MIDI signals because it would be too slow. So um, I went with uh, what uh, Sam showed us in his video about the Super Nintendo. I've used this variable crystal that goes uh, in the hole fro from one leg of the crystal. So the crystal is still there, but it's only uh, like holding by one leg. The other one is the one that sends the signal. You could remove it completely. It's not doing anything. Uh, so basically the potentiometer here, uh, I've made it so that there is like a range of two octaves. So. I've tuned the normal speed of the oscillator with the potentiometer, the mini one that is on this one, and then I've put a parallel, um, it's not a precision potentiometer, but it's a really a small one that is uh, basically uh, allowing me to change the whole um, resistance of the potentiometer, making it that when it's calibrated okay, uh, I can put the potentiometer to the zero position and it is uh, tuned two octave down. Here we have the MIDI connections that goes uh, through um, TRS jacks, uh, one eighth of an inch, and this is for the um, USB plug. I wanted to make it possible to remove the cartridge at any time to use it on a normal SNES so nothing is, uh, is connected forever. So that's pretty much it. Uh, here you have the original LED and diffuser from a Super Nintendo. Nothing special. Um, so it works. I can close the box and uh, everything fits and uh, it works pretty good. So if you have any other questions, uh, you can write uh, in the comments. Thank you.